Now we need to sketch the graph of the inverse function f to the minus 1 of x such that x maps onto the 2 minus half e to the x, x being any real number. So how, how are we going to do this? Well, I would think of this as built up from several graphs using transformations of graphs. So where would I start? Well, I'd start with the basic graph of y equals or f of x equals e to the power x. So let's have a look, see what that looks like. Okay, we'll just draw our axis down through here. Okay, if we can get it to work, there we go. Okay, what does that graph look like? Well, we've got our x axis, very sluggish today. Okay, must be the weather. All right, there we go. Well, not at all. Come on work yay okay so we've got our uh, axes x and y okay so e to the x what's that going to look like well it should look something like this okay exponential graph going through one on the y axis there you go y equals e to the power x now next up is to look at half e to the x and this is basically this kind of idea we've got f of x say equals e to the x um, maybe I ought to change that from f because uh, we're using kind of f notation here let's just change it to a g of x g of x equals e to the x say we're looking now at half e to the x so that's looking at half g of x okay which is now going to be half of e of x what does this do to any function okay what it does is it squashes it if you like parallel to the y-axis we really should call it a stretch scale factor half parallel to the y-axis with the x-axis invariant and what that means is that essentially this graph gets squeezed closer to the x-axis all our y values get halved so we'd come through here underneath that instead of it crossing at one it now crosses at half and this value here is just half the height that it was up here away from the x-axis so this would be our graph of y equals a half e to the power x putting a minus in front of a function what does that do if we were to look now at minus a half g of x okay it would now become minus a half e to the power x putting a minus always gives us a reflection in the x-axis all our y values if you like become negated so all these positive y values become negative values and so we get our graph looking something like this next okay crossing here at minus a half instead of the half up here and then coming away like this okay so this would be the graph of y equals minus a half e to the power x and that point there would be at minus a half okay well we're nearly there now because we now just need to add this to so what we're doing is essentially 2 minus a half g of x we're adding 2 so we end up with 2 minus a half e to the power x now adding 2 causes our graph to move upwards 2 units to translate by 2 units parallel to the y-axis so basically what have we got well let's just draw the real graph down here okay so we'll draw our axes x and y and if we take this blue graph now it's very important to see that it tends towards the x-axis so what we have is basically an asymptote a horizontal asymptote we'll mark that in with a dotted line across here okay something like that that's a very important line okay the line y equals 2 because what's going to happen is that 
our graph of y equals minus half e to the x is going to approach this line if we move it up two units. So it's going to start coming in there, okay? Now what about this minus a half? If we move that up two units, it's going to go from minus a half to one and a half. So we can expect this curve to cross here at the point one and a half. So our curve is going to come across like this to that point there. Should be a little bit more rounded than that really. Okay, let's just maybe rub that out and try and do that again. Just a little bit more rounded. There you go. Okay, so that's the point one and a half. Or we'll put it as top heavy there, three over two. Okay, where it crosses the y-axis. Now it's going to drop away like this. Okay, and that's going to give us our graph of f to the minus one of x, which is essentially 2 minus a half e to the power x. The problem is we've got to find this point here where it crosses the x-axis. So to find that out what we need to do is set our, our y-coordinate equal to 0 in this. Set this to 0. So we could say that when 2 minus a half e to the x equals 0. We can add half e to the x to both sides and would therefore have 2 equals half e to the power x times by 2 to both sides and we have 4 equals e to the power x and then to find out what x is we just need to take natural logs to both sides so therefore we would have x equals the natural log of 4. Okay, so this crosses the x-axis at the natural log of 4. I don't want to change that to uh, a horrible decimal. Um, if you were to type that in your calculator you'd get a non-recurring infinitely long decimal. So just leave it as the exact val value natural log of 4. We'll just write that in there natural log of 4 where it crosses the x-axis. Alright? Okay, well that brings us to the end of this particular video.